Hey everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a particularly exciting dyeing experiment. It's exciting because not just am I showing something interesting with dyeing yarn with food coloring, but I'm also going to be using this as the gender reveal for my unborn child. Um, I should be finding out the gender of my baby in um, a couple days, um, but I'm going to start by setting up the prep. So in both of these bowls, I have just water. And I'm going to add to one of them okay, four drops of, neon, of McCormick's Neon Blue. And to the other bowl, four drops of Neon Pink. Can you see how this is going to turn into a gender reveal yet? Now, you may wonder, so what's the experiment I'm going to do? I've shown you dye, that you can dye yarn with food coloring, but when I've demonstrated that you need to dye yarn with food coloring, you need food coloring, which we've got, yarn, which we've got, and acid. And so once I know the gender, I'm only going to add white vinegar to one of these bowls. And so, theoretically, once I try to dye the yarn and rinse it off, only one of them will retain color and the other will not, thereby revealing the gender of my baby and also um, demonstrating that you need to add acid for dyeing with food coloring to function. So I stuck my two little butterflies of 100% wool yarn in the dyes without any heat at all um, and still no vinegar for maybe about five minutes. And you can see something interesting. I rinsed a bit with soap and water and you can see that one of them looks white and that was the one that was in the blue. And the other is tinged ever so faintly pink. I'm sharing this because depending on what the gender of the actual child is, this may work brilliantly or this may not work as well as one would have liked. Alright, I now know the gender of my child and I have added a splash of white vinegar to one of these two bowls. I've pre-soaked the yarns in just plain water. This is 100% um, palette wool from Knit Picks and I'm going to place each into their respective bowl. I'm now going to heat these bowls of dye in the microwave for one to two minutes until you know the water gets really hot. After two minutes the water in each of the dye baths is warm but not particularly hot yet so I'm going to let it cook for another two minutes. I'm on the second burst of heat for about two minutes and then we are going to let the uh, yarn sit in the dye baths until it has cooled to where I can touch it comfortably. So there is a lot of dye for the amount of yarn used in these samples so you can see that neither of the dye baths have cleared. But now I'm going to place the yarn back into this clear water so we can see what we can see. All right, swirl it up. Ha. So we, in fact, managed to dye both of these yarns, which is not what I had expected. Rinsing now, because I had only added vinegar to one of the dye bags. See, they both very clearly have color. I'm going to add a lot of soap. Ha, well, you can say these are both definitely blue and definitely pink. And I'm not having twins. So I'm going to go ahead and say now that, in fact, I'm having a boy. So I had vinegar.
vinegar in with the blue yarn and not with the pink. So this experiment did not go quite as I had hoped, um, but we did learn something, that a not a lot of vinegar is necessary to dye yarn pink. I know that red requires a lot less acid than blue um, to adhere to the yarn. So it's possible that if the situation was reversed and I had only added the vinegar to the pink um, yarn, um, sorry, to the pink dye bath, that maybe the blue, uh, the blue yarn would not have retained this much color. But, so therefore, in this experiment, we learned that you can, in fact, dye yarn with food coloring without needing any vinegar. But that's why these are experiments, because we don't always know what the result is going to be. So I have some pH paper, and I'm just going to quickly test each of these dyes to see what the pH is. And, okay, so this, so the blue with the vinegar is maybe a four or five. Um, and the pink has a pH of maybe about six. Um, it's hard to know if these have received any discoloration. Um, you can't really tell the difference on the camera. Um, but I, it's hard to see if there's any of the discoloration is caused by the actual dyes themselves. But both of these um, are clearly acidic. So, we learned something else. So in a future dyeing experiment, I do intend to test the water and look at the variation of the pH and what effect it does have on dyeing yarn with food coloring. So stay tuned on the Chemnitz YouTube channel. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I want to thank you for watching this dyeing experiment and helping me celebrate my baby boy who's going to be joining us this October. I am extremely excited and thanks again for joining in.